Toby, I love you, dude. I do love you. I'm glad you're here. Thank God for all your friends and family sitting around you. And my oldest grandbaby's going to get that water here just a little bit. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. Because she has professed that Christ has saved her soul. Amen. Yeah. And she wants to take that next step to show you and show the world that she is a child of the King. Yes, sir. How worthless would I have been today if I would have let the devil defeat me and I had not listened to the Lord speak to me this morning. Sure. Church, I apologize. I went ahead, went ahead and had chased teach this morning. Sometimes I feel so unworthy to stand behind the pulpit and teach God's Word. I lost my focus. I lost my direction. But I have a wife that said, you need to step up. Something's wrong somewhere. You need to find something that excites you again about the Word of God. You ever been in that? You been in that moment where you read and you read and you read and you study and you study and it's just not there. I thank God for a new focus. And I want to sing this song. We've sang it one time before. And this has just been rolling on my heart. And I said it the last time we sang it. This song helps me find peace. It helps me find my place. And I thank God that one of these days I'm going to have a room with a few play. <coughs>
place where you can get help. And a place that's good for you. Uh, I looked over at Brace right before I got up, uh, right before they sat in the room with a view. I looked at Brace and said, you okay? He said, I'm good. And I said, I want you to know something. I said, I'm proud of you. And he said, I'm proud of you too. <laughs> Just, I, I'm trying to remind us, everyone in this house, you're blessed. Amen. I could I could dive into about everybody in the house, really, because I, Pastor, you know some things. Uh, I'm just letting you know you're blessed. Miss Nancy Lunsford, could you help us with a couple verses, of course, a couple verses, of course. We'll sing together. We'll help you. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Amen. You ought to rejoice. You ought to give thanks. Is that right? Yeah. God been good to you. Yeah. We all say, go ahead, Miss Nancy. As the world looks upon me, you and Jesus have some time. I've been praying for quite a while if I have the opportunity to have the word. 
records and I just feel like you left on a really great note so Good. Um, of discussing and it really felt like I don't know progress was made yeah. um, her heart was a lot more open and, and just little things along the way this week I've noticed um, just, some, just some comments and things like that and we all know that a little bit is a long way
what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had legion. This man was sitting clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. I want you to look at the change. This man's possessed. He was breaking chains. He was cutting himself, living in the tombs. And after Jesus gets done with him, he is clothed, he's sitting, and he's in his right mind. You can be seated if you would. Can we pray together? Our Father of Heaven, we look to you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you, Lord, for all that you've done, all that you're doing. Jesus, you are precious. And Lord, I thank you for that. <coughs> Father, I, I thank you, Father, for the day. I thank you for what it represents. Jesus, get the baptized again. What a beautiful, beautiful blessing. God, I thank you for that. Jesus, as we gather in for time in your word, help us hear the word of God. Help us be made better. Help us be honest. Lord, every last one of us can be made better. Lord, we're not in heaven yet. We can be made better. Would you save the lost? Father, would you strengthen the weak? Would you help those in need? And that's all of us. Jesus, I need you. I can help nobody. You can help everybody. Jesus, I trust you. Please help. Please anoint. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Look with me in verse number five, if you would. And always, night and day, he was in the tombs. He was in the mountains and he was in the tombs, crying and cutting himself. I, I would love to say just a few words before we get into preach today. Uh, I want to give you this title. The, the, there's so much about this story that troubles me, and I pray it troubles you. When you and I look at being possessed by demons, Hollywood has done us no favors. Uh, we got folks with their heads twirling. We got folks climbing ceilings. And that's, that's impressive. Amen. But I, I want to say this to you. Anything that goes against your relationship with God, anything that goes against your joy, anything that goes against your peace, amen. Yeah. Anything that goes against your family, amen. Once it overtakes you, guess what you are? You possess. Is that right? I, I want to say this. This whole story troubles me, and I, I want to echo this again. All of us at some time or another have been or are possessed. Uh, I'll preach that deeper that way we all get under it. Uh, you and I have been possessed by stress at times. Amen. Yeah. We've been possessed by worry. We've been possessed by addiction. Uh, I want to preach addiction right this morning. I don't know so much. I've been studying some. I don't know if I believe so much in addiction, but I do believe in disease. Yeah. I believe in that. Uh, at some time or another, we may have been possessed by fear. We might have been possessed by worry. We might have been possessed by pride, by ego. I'm telling you, we have our demons. Amen. I, I, I'm looking here. This story troubles me. And there's things that you and I don't consider about this that I'd love to bring out today. But I have to admit, the thing that, struck, that, that troubles me the most is two words. Mark 5, Mark 5 and 5. And always. That means there's no rest from his demons. That means there's no rest from his troubled heart, his troubled mind. That means there's there's no rest from cutting himself. That means there, there's no rest from his depression. There, there's no rest. If you and I will admit this, there's a difference between trouble and torture. But I would love to let you know there's times that if you'll let sin go too far, if you let depression go too far, you let fear, you let you go too far, what once troubled you will begin to torture you. Amen. Amen. I, I, I want to preach this morning, verse number five, I want to give you this thought. Is it time that always is finished? Is it time that always is finished? Amen. Amen. I, I pray the Lord help us today. Uh, I want to say this, the Bible, I appreciate the Bible so much. It's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. If you pray hard, I'll preach hard and I'll be done quick. Amen. Uh, but I, I want to say this today. I appreciate the Word of God. I appreciate, as we 
said, it's a help to our feet, a life to our path. Uh, I appreciate what the Bible is, but can we admit there are some things that the Bible leaves out? That's the truth. Uh, that I'm interested in. This man is possessed by a demon. Uh, there's times you and I, uh, he's got an unclean spirit about him. As Mark 5, at verse number 2 says, he's got an unclean spirit about him. Uh, I would love to preach it where it hurts today. There are sometimes you and I have an unclean spirit about us. Is that right? Uh, there's times you and I have a temper. There's times you and I invite everybody around us to our pity party. Amen. And then we get upset when nobody shows up. Uh, there's times you and I, we've got unclean spirit of evilness, of wicked, of revenge, of vengeful, of bitterness, of hatred. You and I can have an unclean spirit that we are just offended. Amen. Amen. There's times we have an unclean spirit of being a victim. There's times we have an unclean spirit of being the offender. Amen. Uh, but I, I want to look, if we can, some things that you and I uh, maybe miss about this man. We see this man uh, that is so overtaken in his demons. His demons are running him. I'd love to ask you this morning, are your demons running you or are you letting God run off your demons? Anybody here? Anybody here? I, I want to say this to you. Something that troubles me about this story, I, I believe this is a real man. I believe this is a real person. So if he's a real man and he's a real person, that means he's got real parents. Uh, I, I look and uh, as everyone knows, I work with youth, work with teens, work with kids, uh, and I've seen them addicted to things. I've seen kids in troubled times and uh, just rough at the big rough. There's no other way to put it. And I've watched as parents have done everything they know to do, but the kid, the child situation only gets worse. And I've watched as parents are just so spent because they poured every bit of energy they can into this person, this child situation, and it's only getting worse. And then you see that this, this the Bible calls him a man. So this is an adult person. And then you see just how much uh, that this unclean spirit, uh, you see just how much this these man's demons are possessing him. They've got control of him. Uh, I, I want to say this to you. Uh, and then these parents, they would look out and uh, maybe they would see uh, maybe other parents that are enjoying time with their kids and their grandkids and uh, have the family over and uh, maybe have worship with them and uh, get to have good conversations with them. Uh, but this parent, this family, uh, this mom, this dad, uh, I got into this Thursday night. Uh, I never want to preach and I, I never want to put out uh, that every family is in a good situation. Is that right? Uh, I never want to put out uh, that every marriage is in a good place. Uh, I, I never want to make it seem like uh, that if you are someone that's struggling, if you're a family that's struggling, uh, then you're automatically aliens from the church of the living God. Uh, I want to say this to you. Everybody in the church, I don't care if it's here at the harbor or if it's the church down the road, every person in that church has problems whether they admit it or not. Yeah. I, I, I want to welcome humans in this morning. I, I want to welcome human marriages, human relationships, human teenagers in this morning. I, can I say this to you today? Boy, when you look, amen, some families seem to be Amen. Controlled and uh, tortured by their demons more than others. Uh, but there's something in this family's life. Amen. Uh, they listen at the tombs every night and uh, they hear uh, their son as he screams in agony. And they would beg God, please, please, if there's a God up there. And I, I want to say this to you. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, this man, uh, he was not possessed. As far as we know, he did not have this unclean spirit from birth. He was not possessed from birth. And so there was a time, amen, that they enjoyed a good life with this man. And this is what I see. And I'll move on. And this is what I see. Amen. As the family would gather in and try to help this man. And try to help him get away from his demons. And try to help him. Amen. And I want to preach this right that this man is gender is a man. Uh, but can I say this? A woman uh, can be just as attacked by her demons as a man can. Uh, I want to say this. A parent uh, can be just as tortured 
Amen. I want to say this. I believe this man. That boy, I don't know if he can ever even remember a day. He's been so tortured and so troubled. That boy, I, I've got a word in my spirit. I want to give this to you. Maybe tortured and troubled doesn't fit you. Maybe it doesn't fit me. But can I tell you a word that will fit all of us? Broken. Amen. 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 There's times that you and I can struggle so long that we don't remember a time before struggling. We can be tortured so long that we don't remember a time that we weren't tortured. We can battle our faith so long that we don't remember a time that we weren't battling. This man has battled so long that he does not remember a time. I don't remember what it was like when I was free. I don't remember what it was like before I was troubled. I don't remember one day of what it's like. Amen. But I wasn't in this state. Boy, can I say this? And I'm going to preach where the Bible's at because I know we're behind the lines. Boy, it's possible that this man also had a wife. It's possible that he was married. And if this is concerning, Brother Bob, because can you see, amen, boy, if this man started with troubles in his life, let's put him 18, 19 year old, amen, and he's battling these demons, battling this war in himself, and then he goes in and gets married, and he gets married, and he's wounded. He gets married, and his demons are already running his life. Can I say this? I believe this. I, I pray you help me a little bit right here. I believe the wedding day ought to be one of the best days in your life. Amen. I, I love Zoe and Tanner's wedding. This is, don't take this so literal. There's times faith that I'll put money down. How much you want to bet? The groom will cry. How much you want to bet? And we'll change that bet. How much you want to bet? He'll cry at the rehearsal. How much you want to bet? Amen. And I told Tanner on rehearsal night, I said, I need you to do me a favor. Don't let me down tomorrow. I've got 20 bucks. You'll cry. Amen. And he said, I will do it. And then here came his kids down the aisle. And I looked over at Tanner, and that lip was quivering. And I, I, when I got home, I looked at Faith, and I just did this to her. Amen. And then here came the kids, and here came Zoe. And he just, it, it, it sounded like he was in labor. He was just, hit that, hit that. It's always 
she looks over at her husband who is no longer troubled, but he's tortured. Everybody good? He's not just troubled, but he's tortured. And because he's tortured, he's also torturing their home. It's good for us to realize when you and I are not where we need to be with God, what it's doing to those around us. Here, this trouble is, here this torture is, and she's recommended counselor on top of counselor. Hey, if you don't care, say, preach faster. Preach faster. Amen. Amen. I need to move. Recommended counselor, recommended all this mess, and did nothing but grow worse. And she looked at him and said, I can't help you, but I'm going to put you in God's hands. There's nothing I can do. And he says, you're going to give up on me? I'm going to the tombs. So there is a husband. Hey, man, and I want to put this both ways if I can. Up in that tomb, cutting himself absolutely at the bottom of the barrel. Absolutely in his worst state in life. Life falling down all around him. And I want to preach this right. I'm making it look like he's as low as it gets. But it's possible that pride and arrogance can put you in a place that nobody can deal with you. It's possible that your pride and your arrogance, honey, you never do nothing wrong. You're the best thing since Jesus Christ. It's possible. Hey, I can't even deal with you. I can't live with you. I can't sleep with you. Hey, you got to get to get. Hey, man, honey, he's in such a state. But every night, there's a wife that's crying from the table. Does not have to be final. 
That troubles me when I've got eight people that say amen right there. Failure does not have to be final. The bad dad I am will be the bad dad I am always. Who told you that? The not good mom I am will be the not good mom I am always. Who told you that? Hey, you got some Bibles. Mark 5 and 5. And always. You got your Bible. What color are those words? Huh? So they're not red, right? Hey, repeat. Finish this rhyme for me. The words in red are what? Jesus said. And always day and night, he's tortured. Always day and night, I'll be this failure. Always day and night, I'm going to be addicted to this. Always day and night, my family's going to struggle like they struggle. Always day and night, I'll never have the peace with God that I should. I'll never have the salvation that other people have. I'll never, I'll never, my family will never, my marriage will never, my kids will never. Can I tell you who said that? That came from your blessed lips. That never came from Jesus' blessed lips. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get ready to finish it, can? And always night and day, he was in the mountains and the tombs crying and cutting himself. How many of you, and again, we're about halfway through, we're getting there. How many of you have ever been embarrassed by things you said when you were wrong? About 80% of us did, man. The rest of y'all be embarrassed. Now. Jesus goes, he, he hears, can I give you this? He hears the man far off, but he sees him far off. I want everybody in the house to repeat something after me. Ready? Jesus sees me. I, I, I got to wonder something real quick. Did, did he... I believe Jesus saw this man two ways. I believe he saw him naked. I believe he saw him possessed. I believe he saw him tortured. But you know how else I believe he saw him at that same moment? I believe he saw him whole. I believe he saw him sitting and in his right mind. Hey, let me preach a little right here. Let me play some heart strings. I can remember. Hey Amen. You with me? I can remember, Chase, you, you like crowd participation. I ain't want to preach if people have to sleep. Well, Chase, they ain't sleep, they pray. I'll watch. I can remember when Avery started paying a whole, whole lot of attention to the preaching. I, I can remember when all of a sudden Avery, who used to play with Miss Rhonda, who used to go sit with Miss Ida and play around, Miss Karen play around, all of a sudden Jesus started getting thick in the house and she'd go up high behind Courtney. Yeah. I remember that. And then I remember all of a sudden she didn't want to come up for all anymore. And I remember that time I'd be preaching and she'd be sitting right there or right there and she'd just be staring at me just big eyes. Well, Chase, you big brown and loud court. No. Something deeper than that. I can remember the Sunday morning revival. She, she, her and Caitlin, her aunt Caitlin get together. They come and pray right there. I remember that morning. I remember talking to her right there on the pew. Amen. But Chase was Jesus seeing her. He was seeing her two ways. He was seeing her as someone that needed him so bad. He was seeing her as someone that was didn't understand just yet. But man, she needs me. But you want to know what he also saw? He also saw her clothed in his grace, clothed in his compassion, and in his right mind. Amen. Amen. I can remember first time Kobe came here. It may have came here and he made fun of me. I was in a sweater vest that day. I ain't more than one sense. It may have. I can remember that. Came in and Jesus got real big and he sat back there and went good. Next week came back. Jesus got real big and he had that near the headlight look sitting right back there with Chase. Folks was coming to the altar, coming and getting them some Jesus help. Hang on a minute. Avery's front row smiling right 
friends with Jesus help. Hey man, and Chase every once in a while, I'd watch him and he'd listen to me, Bob, I'm going to give you some roses. I'd watch him have Kobe sit back there real great face. He needn't have a talk with Jesus. Does anybody else believe a little talk with Jesus make everything right? I believe that. It's a, I wish you'd help me right here. It's amazing what a prayer can do. Amen. Amen. But boy, the Chase, he stared at Kobe a while, and then he put his head down and just rub his hands together. And I, I'm, th I'm sitting there and I'm looking at Chase, and I'm thinking, boy, Chase just asked him, asked him, would you like to go pray? And I was proud of you, bub, because you sat there and you prayed for your friend. And I went back and talked to him at the church, had a good conversation about salvation. Have a good conversation. Have that salvation is not religion. Have, can I let you know something? Amen. It doesn't matter what human being it is in this world. Amen. They need Jesus Christ. Amen. And it's not a situation of being a part of a cult. It's not a situation of being a part of religion. It's about being a part of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Have, listen to me. Amen. I asked him if he wanted to pray. I told him. I said, now, Cole, when it comes to you getting saved, I can't get saved for you. I can pray for you, but you will have to talk to Jesus for yourself. You want him, you talk to him. He said, I don't even know how to do that. I said, you talk to him like you need him. Talk to him like you love him. Had a good talk. We prayed back there. But Jesus saw him as a junior, soon to be senior. Amen. That's got his whole life ahead of him. But Jesus wanted to walk every bit of his life with him. Amen. Jesus saw him as somebody getting ready to go off the army. And Jesus wanted to take that ride with him. Jesus saw his love and his affection for his family and said, I want to be able to help him more. I want to be able to help him love his family. He saw his affection for T and said, I want to be able to help him more. Saw everything in his life. And then I remember the day. Hey, man, all the call came. Jesus real thick in the house. Hey, man, here came Kobe. Hey, man. Hey, boy, hey, within the first few seconds, came right here. Hey, man, we got down and prayed together. And I looked at him. And I said, Bub, I said, what's, what's on your mind? Did Jesus do anything for you? And he looked me eye to eye. And he said, I just got saved. Hey, Amen. Amen. I'm letting you know you're here today. Hey, man, it doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. Jesus doesn't just see you in the shape you are. Yeah. And I'll apologize to you. He does not see you how you see yourself. He doesn't see you how you want to be seen. He sees you as you are, but he also sees you how you can be. Yeah. Yeah. That's finished. Jesus goes and he speaks. You still with me? Yeah. Jesus goes and he speaks to this man. Hey, can I say this? How many of you would admit that when you are controlled by your demons, your demons in the driver's seat, you in the trunk, amen, you don't act like yourself. Well, ain't nobody with me. 
Amen. You remember back when we used to respect parents? Amen. I remember. Oh, for the good old days. Amen. You don't know why I got respect for that man as old as I am, big as I am? Because that man been my dad, not my father. Any fellow can be a father. It takes a man to be a dad. Amen. Watch with Prince. Amen. My dad's been my dad all my life, and he's been whooping me all my life. Can I tell you why the devil stood up when Jesus said, what is your name? And he stood in attention. You don't know why? Because ever since before the Garden of Eden, the Jesus has been whooping up on the devil. But you and I ain't got that kind of sense. <laughs> Every once in a while we get so brave up on Jesus and just get the back talking and, and the devil looks at us and says, who's the dummy now? <laughs> oh, we didn't. We ain't like none of this at all. Amen. <laughs> Jesus calls out the devil. What is your name? Sir, my name is Legion for we are many. You see those herd of swine? You go take on that herd of swine. Can I let you know something? The demons, the struggles that you are battling, people better than you have fallen to. Yeah, true. Right. Hey, Harbor, I'm about done. Hey, Harbor, the battles you and I face as a church in 2023, churches that are better than us have fallen to. Hey, teenagers, because you think you got us bad. The battles that you face every day of your life, other teens better than you, more dedicated than you, got better grades than you, a worse family life than you got, have fallen to. I wish somebody helped me in the house. Amen. It's going to be long. I'm going to be saying, can I get a witness? Amen. <laughs> But why not this man? Why not? Can I ask you a question? Why not you? Why not you? Why not me? I was addicted to pills for years, but here I stand six feet above the grave. And others that didn't battle near as long as I did, they're there and I'm here. Why? Why? I was a cutter. I'm not going to throw you under the bus. I'll put myself down there. I, I, I was a cutter. Didn't want to live. Folks that had worst case depression, same as I did, are, are gone. Can I say this? Anybody in the house, there are people that have done the exact same things you have, and they suffered a much worse fate than you are. Why not you? Jason, what do you quit thinking you're so good? Every last one of us, Chase, you're getting quieter because I, I, I'm near the meat and the message. It's not where you fall asleep. It's where you wake up. There have been people that have suffered worse tragedies than you. And they got capsized by it. But on the same hand, there are people that have suffered so much worse than you. So much worse. And instead of getting capsized, they walked on the waters. So why do you feel with what you've been through that you get to ground? Jesus sends these demons to these swine. And they went running off a cliff and died. Can you imagine this moment with me? I wish I had a little shout right here, but I believe God's going to help some people today. Maybe we'll shout later. You never know. Jesus leaves this man clothed and sitting in his right mind.
Can I remind you of something if you're still with me today? Your worship, your worship does not have to mean a thing to anybody else. It just has to mean something to you. Hey, can, can I do a little digging real quick? Take and Courtney, Cody, Josh, can I, can I think in y'all's family just for a minute publicly? Thank you. I, I, I've worked with these two and their struggles. I know about them. I, I know about those two struggles. And y'all have seen it at the worst of the worst. And do you know what we did a few months ago? We went from the caves and tombs and we set four chairs right here. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Amen. Can you imagine this? I ain't making no legion. We all legion. Amen. Yeah. Can you imagine legion who's screaming his curses at his wife, screaming his curses at his family, but just a few months later, pastor comes to legion and his wife, the church wants to ordain you. Yeah. Anybody there? I, I, I gotta say this to you. Can you imagine the relief? Can you imagine the rejoicing when Jesus has this man who was once named Legion by the hand, walks him up to his mom and dad. Yeah. <laughs> and Brian they have to peek through the door hole. Last time he was here, he destroyed our stuff. Last time he was here, it was nothing but horrible. It was nothing but an argument. Peek through the door hole, and it's Almighty standing with this man. You can open the door. Yeah. Hey, Dad, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. Hey, Mom, I'm a brand new man. Can you imagine the rejoicing of a husband's face when Jesus walks the wife to the husband? Here she is. Hey, I wish somebody... Can I ask you something? How many of you parents are glad your kids never saw you at your worst? How many of you spouses glad that your spouse has got a better spouse than they used to. Hey, honey. I want you to sing for invitation today. We got visitors in the house. I'll tell them about this. Nothing greater than grace. Go sing. She's going to sing nothing greater than grace. You look through your Bibles. The number five. Hey, man, you still with me? Amen. Chase, it's baptism Sunday. We run late. Amen. We usually don't get out till 1 30. <laughs> the number five in your Bibles, guess what it represents? Grace. What chapter of the Bible is Legion in? What verse? Did Legion say, I suffer with this always? What chapter of Romans is where sin did abound grace as much more? Man, they don't like six of you grab that. Today's August 6th. represents the number of man. Anybody in the house? Amen. Amen. I feel like I'm talking English to a mess of French folk. Amen. Amen. <laughs> it's very possible in this house there's a mess load of humans that need the grace of God. Amen. You don't need what you deserve. Ain't you glad God didn't give you what you deserve? Yeah. Yeah. You don't need what you deserve. You need grace. It's grace that will forgive you. It's grace that will stand you. It's grace that will help you live change.
Can, can I? Come on, honey. Come on, honey. You know how the folks up here help me quit. Amen. I, I want to say this. We got visitors here, and I, sometimes it's needful for visitors, sometimes it's needful for the whole church to be reminded. Nobody can say your prayer for you. But we can gather around and pray with you, and we love on you. Chase, I don't even know everybody in this house, but everybody in this house is for you. Can I say this to you? Chase, I don't even know how to pray. Talk to God. Just talk to Him. Humble yourself aside for Him. Chase, how long do I pray? Until God does what you need Him to do. Chase, why can't you tell me? Because if I'm the one that tells you you're saved, as soon as I fail, your faith is in trouble. Chase, do I have to come up there? No, but can I encourage you something? This is a good place. Anywhere up here you want to come pray, and I'd even encourage you this. You don't want to come by yourself. Ask somebody next to you. Hey, go pray with me. This is what I'm asking you today. The things that are troubling you, the things that are torturing you always, is that time always came to an end. Well, Chase, it can't be fixed in a day. You don't know how bad things are. You don't know what can happen in a day. You can start. You can start. i got to wonder where people wind up toward them when they start with Jesus. Are you still with me? I gotta wonder where people wind up, Sydney, when they start with Jesus. There's a land that's fairer than day. And by faith we can see it afar. You start with Jesus, he'll start with you, and now I guess where you'll wind up. It's such a better place. Start with Jesus. Take steps with Jesus. Your life, your home, you will wind up in so much of a better place. If you're here this morning, you need some help from Jesus. Why don't you come? I'd love to pray with you. Folks, I'd love to pray with you. Why don't you come? Let's stand at the same day if you would.
life with Jesus is for other people. How can peace is for other people?
she came in, and Miss B, Miss B is not here today. And uh, I said, sis, I said, you got so many people you can sit with, don't just sit back here. And uh, I looked back there, and I thought, hey, man, she, she might be an honorary member of Kobe's family. She might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's at the harbor this time. Boy, and, and, and truthfully, you know, you and I, we can remember days, I, I can at least, you have your addictions, things of that nature. You can remember how long it's been. You can. But boy, you all take time to remember when God's made changes in your life. Yes. You all take time to acknowledge those things. Anybody else? All right. It's a good season. It's a good time. Uh, we've got baptism Sunday today, so you can be seated if you would. You need musicians, don't you? Yes, man. Musicians, come if you will. Nancy, get ready if you would. Um, if any of our folks get baptized and need to get changed, by all means, you can do that. Uh, bathrooms. There's two downstairs, one up here and two out in fellowship hall. Musicians will play as we get things ready. You can patient. We'll be right out with you.
blessing to be here and witness the and be a part of the baptism of my little one. And God's a little one now. Same with Colby and same with all those that have went through this and that I'm praying that we'll go through this. But it's an honor to be here and, and be a part of this as her father, but now as her brother. And Avery, I know you're, you're little, but today she's taken a major leap in faith. Yes, sir. By wanting this to show you in the world what she's done and who she belongs to you now, and I'm thankful for that. One last thing before we do this. She said something to Courtney and I about a week ago that I'll never forget. The baptism kind of came up in conversation and we were talking about it and she turned that into a conversation of salvation and who was saved and who weren't and we were trying to explain to her that it, it, that's not up to us. As long as you know what you got. And what she said in return was, okay, because I don't want my friends to go to hell. That tells me that she knows what she got. Amen. And she knows where she's going. Amen. And for that, I thank you, Jesus. Amen. On the profession of her faith in Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and in obedience to His command, I now baptize her in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
to admit that's changed over the past couple months. And he said, I can't put my finger on it. And he said, last year, he said he'd do something, mess up somehow, and he would deny it to the death that he even did it. And you can catch it. I told me you did that. No, I didn't. He said, but there's a completely different attitude about him the past few months, the past few weeks. And I, I won't let you know what that is. You get you some Jesus. He'll bring the best out of you. He'll bring the best out of you. Don't be slippery proud of you. Uh, proud of the young man. Proud of the man he's becoming. Proud of the man he will be. Yep. Got anything to say about it? Clear? Still say?
believe he, he deserves it. And for these two statements of faith, I believe they deserve standing ovation. Don't you let's stand. Yeah. 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 Thank you. 